So I was watching a commercial this weekend, and it was for it was a Chevy commercial. And in the Chevy commercial, they brought in a Ford truck, their rival, and they loaded them full of bricks. And Chevy's like, "Look, we handle bricks better than they handle bricks." And my takeaway was, "Damn, you know you are being paid respect." When the rival puts you in their commercials, that's what Wendy's did for McDonald's. I know all of you this morning are like, woo, that is bad for LeBron. No, the greatest compliment anybody can give LeBron that the NBA is how many years old? I don't know, 75, you know, how old is it? There's been all these amazing players, thousands of great players. But when LeBron just had a bad half, everybody ran to their device. He's not MJ. He's not MJ. You didn't do that when Kobe had a bad game or Shaq had a bad game or Kevin Garnett had a bad game or Akeem had a bad game or Duncan had a bad game. The ultimate compliment is that you now as fans are acknowledging there is only one challenger to the greatest basketball player of all time. That's it. You're acknowledging it. You ran to your phone last night. You ran to your device. You called your buddies. You didn't do that with Magic and Bird. You're acknowledging. Chevy's acknowledging. Our rival's no good, but we're going to put them in our commercial. I tell young broadcasters this all the time. You will have arrived, I tell college students. When something happens in sports at night, and people rush to their phone to send you an email or a tweet or a Facebook post. You have made an emotional connection with those people that's very difficult to do with family members. That's when you've arrived, when you've made that bond emotionally with your fans. Love, hate, whatever they send you. It doesn't matter. Sometimes it's a joke. Sometimes it's funny. Sometimes it's cryptic. Sometimes it's anger. But you're acknowledging this morning. You run to a device when LeBron had his first bad game in three years. That ain't a criticism, baby. That's a compliment. LeBron was on a 12 to 15 month roll. It was tough to be a LeBron hater because you kept coming every day, waking up and dang it, he won again. Oh, he's got another title. Oh, he set another record. Just this year, have you seen his 13 games? Far surpassing 13 straight playoff games for anything Michael's done, anything Magic's done, anything Bird's done, anything Shaq's done, anything Kobe's done, anything, you know, McHale, second-tier guys. He had a lousy, disengaged second half. Lousy. Just didn't play. And my take is, sometimes, this is why you get upsets in sports. Apathy, boredom. Mike Tyson didn't prepare for Buster Douglas. He didn't think he had to. Michigan didn't prepare for Appalachian State. They didn't think they had to. The Russians had just beaten our American kids. They played them again, miracle on ice. They didn't think they had to be at an emotional peak. And here you had the Cavs had beaten them by, what, 40 or 50 in Boston? And you led by 21 in the third? And you just went completely disengaged. Kenny Smith talked about it last night on TNT. I wasn't there. He saw this. I didn't. Good point. First thing I said, I said, man, LeBron doesn't look engaged. And he said, what do you mean? We, and we were talking. He has a routine that he does with his team. And he's done it like six, seven times when we've been doing the games. And today was the first time he didn't do the same order. Now, I could say, well, yeah, a lot of things happen. But NBA players are creatures of habit. I didn't see the same routine. And, I, and then Charles says, first five minutes of the game, oh, they're not engaged. Yeah, you know, they'd won by 50 in Boston a couple days earlier. But think about this. Put this in perspective. When Michael Jordan left the Bulls, they had won 57 games in the title. He left, they won 55. They were clearly a team that could win a bunch of games. Remember, you keep telling me how great the East was. Michael left, the Bulls were still viable. They didn't win titles without Michael, but they were viable without Michael. They won 55, not 57. And if not for one Hugh Holland's call, they could have gone to another finals. That This Cavs team which is sweeping and blowing out teams by 50, can't 
beat a Celtics team without Isaiah Thomas unless LeBron's great. I mean, I always knew LeBron was valuable. But you win on Friday when he's great by 50. On Sunday when he's lousy for a half, you can't beat this team without Isaiah Thomas? This speaks to his value. The Bulls were still really, really good without Michael. They won two fewer games. This team can't beat the Celtics at home without their best player. If LeBron doesn't play well, and you want me today to say, bad for LeBron. Holy God, does this show his value. Yeah, he had a bad game. First win three years since May 28, 2014. <laughs> Darn. I also want to segue to this because I think this is what I was going to lead my show with today, but I wanted to address the actual game. Um, what four players, despite last night, what four players have really played well in the playoffs? You know, believe it or not, LeBron's, LeBron's averaging 32.5 points, 53% shooting, 43% threes. LeBron. Um, Kevin Durant's been terrific. 25.5 points, 54% shooting, 41% on threes. Kevin Durant's been great. Uh, Steph Curry's been terrific this year. 28 points, 50% shooting, 43% on threes. And you know the other guy who's played really good in the playoffs? Kevin Love. Kevin Love's played as well as he's ever played for the Cavs. So what do LeBron, KD, Steph Curry, and Kevin Love, those four, what do they all have in common? In the last year minimum, we have crapped on all of them, ripped all of them, judged each one harshly. We called KD sellout, bum, hurting the league. LeBron, no MJ. Steph Curry, man, can't do it in the finals, overrated. Kevin Love, last year, trade him. He's holding the Cavs back. For the record, this is also what MJ dealt with for a six, seven years. Couldn't get through the Celtics and couldn't get through the Pistons. Magic Johnson dealt with this early in his career. They called him Tragic Johnson. Folks, the struggle makes the man. It creates a toughness and a body armor. Tom Brady still resents those who passed him. You know who doesn't get criticism? John Wall, always being defended. James Harden, Russell Westbrook. It's just a series of accolades, and you're too tough, and give them plaques, and give them awards, rush to their defense, pandering, local pom-pom waving. Last year at this time, you were ripping Kevin Love. You wanted him off the team. He has responded by working harder in the offseason and having a great playoff run. As parents, our kids fall off bikes. Don't rush to pick them up. Let them get up themselves. Let them cry. Let them cry. Let them get on the bike. Let them figure it out. Because it creates a resilience and an armor that will pay dividends later on. I think it's real easy to figure out. Every single quarterback in this league right now, Drew Brees looked past, Tom Brady, Joe Montana, Russell Wilson, Aaron Rodgers. You ever notice this? Look at all the quarterbacks in the NFL right now. Tom Brady was looked over by five teams. Dak Prescott by all the teams in the NFL four times. Aaron Rodgers slid in the first round. Drew Brees went in the second round. Best young quarterbacks, Derek Carr. Everybody passed the Texans twice. You don't think that creates the resilience and the anger and the I'm going to show you? Demand a lot from our stars. Often an artist has his best CD or album after a bad one. Like they said this for years and years with a lot of the hip-hop stars. Their first and second works, their greatest, then they get rich. And then it's like, okay, where'd my anger go? Where did my... And you got you to gotta find that again. Is that you don't think ripping LeBron has created this body armor? You don't think Steph Curry playing now has a little to do with us dumping on him? You don't think Kevin Durant being called a sellout hasn't motivated him? And you don't think Kevin Love, who you wanted off the Cavs last year, you don't think there's a connection between that and him playing this well? Your kid falls off a bike. Let him get up. It'll pay dividends later.
Uh, coming up today, we have obviously a ton of stuff. Chris Brustard, Cedric Sabalas in studio next hour. <laughs> I covered Cedric Sabalas in college. Really, really good dude. Uh, Rob Parker stops by today, and I saw an amazing stat sent to me by our guys uh, at Fox Sports. Uh, I got to share with you in terms of the Boston Celtics and the number one pick is I, I literally saw it. It's right in front of me. I didn't see it. They alerted me to it. It's amazing. That's coming up next.